Hey everyone, Derek here. In today's video, I want to talk about a working space in DaVinci Resolve that I think deserves a little more attention. And specifically, I'm talking about a working space for primary adjustments. So adjustments like exposure, balance, contrast, and saturation. And that working space is ACES CC. I see it mentioned here and there, but not enough, in my opinion, based on how helpful it can be. The nice thing about ACES CC is that the offset control will give you the same results as gain in linear. So this opens up a lot of possibilities for primary adjustments. And today I'm going to give you three reasons why you might want to try ACES CC for your primaries. Reason number one is printer lights. Linear gain is a great way to adjust exposure and balance. It's very clean and gives very similar behavior to how adjustments are made in camera. For example, I will balance this image here by using linear gain. I have color management set up using CSTs, and my timeline color space is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. To balance this using linear gain, I'm going to switch the gamma to linear and put my Lumix at zero. And I'm going to balance the image by using gain, and I'm going to assume that this wall should be white, so I'm going to balance that. So linear gain in this way works really well, but if you're someone that likes printer lights, you can't use it because printer lights control the offset tool. That's where ACES CC can come in because offset gives you the same results. You can use printer lights to make the same adjustments. And if you aren't aware of how printer lights work in Resolve, they are keyboard shortcuts for the offset tool, which can help you adjust exposure in incremental steps or balance by adjusting each channel individually. To use them, just make sure under Color, Printer Light Hotkeys is selected. And under DaVinci Resolve Keyboard Customization, under Color, you can set full printer lights, half printer lights, or quarter printer lights. You can set your own shortcuts for those. I have quarter printer lights set up. So I'm going to go to this identical clip here and go to the balance node. And to use ACES CC, I'm going to switch gamma to ACES CC instead of linear. And now I can use my offset tool and my printer lights. So I'm going to use printer lights to do the same thing that I did with linear gain. I'm going to bring up the red channel and bring down the blue channel to make that wall appear white. Just like that. Now if I click back and forth here, you can see I ended up in the same place. So ACES CC can be a good way to have photometrically accurate printer lights. And this works for exposure as well. So if I go back to the first image and go to linear, Lumix at zero, and increase the gain here to increase exposure here. I'm just gonna actually overexpose this so we can get an idea of how they are similar. And then I'm going to come to the next image and switch this to ACES CC and use printer lights to try to match the exposure. And now if I flip back and forth, you can see you can get to the same place using a different tool. So I can get to the same place as linear gain using offset in ACES CC and allowing for printer lights for exposure as well. So I'm gonna reset these. Reason number two to consider ACES CC for your primary adjustments is how the contrast works. It gives you slightly different results compared to DaVinci Intermediate and can roll off the shadows and the highlights a little more smoothly. For example, here I'll change my pivot to 0.336 in DaVinci Intermediate and add contrast. And you can see how the shadows kind of crash through the bottom. And if I go far enough, the whites will crash through the top. And I should mention that this is with the S curve for contrast option selected off to give more control for our roll off. But comparing this to ACES CC contrast, And if you use this, use a pivot of 0.414 as that pivots around middle gray. Now if I add contrast, 
You can see things roll off a little more there at the bottom in kind of a smooth, natural way without relying on this setting here. When you use contrast in this way, it's very similar to the contrast tool in the HDR area, except it has a more natural response with saturation that most people might be used to. For example, here I can add contrast in the HDR, and you can see how perceptually it feels like it's being desaturated a little bit. And you may like that and prefer that tool. If you don't, you can get similar contrast with saturation reacting the other way with ACES CC. So here is contrast with ACES CC. Now if I move back and forth here, you can see between HDR contrast and ACES CC contrast, the contrast is very similar but the saturation is different. So if you prefer saturation this way, this may be an approach to contrast that would work better for you. Reason number three for considering ACES CC for your primaries is the ability to combine nodes without adding extra clicks. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll reset these. So a common setup here is to use linear for exposure and balance, the regular contrast tool and regular saturation. While you can combine exposure and balance because they're using the same working space, you can't combine contrast into those nodes because it's using a different working space. And contrast does not work well in a linear space. And some people like to combine exposure and contrast. So if we did that and made this node for both, using other tools such as HDR ex Global Exposure Wheel for exposure, and you can flip back over here to use your contrast. But now you're adding clicks. You're going from this back to this, and it just adds time and complexity to your workflow. However, if you use ACES CC, now you can change your exposure with a tool that's identical and add contrast. I would default this still to 0.414 and add contrast without having to add another click to your workflow. So you can change exposure and contrast in the same node on the same panel. And you can keep combining nodes. You can combine all of these into one node if you want. We could just call this, say, a base grade where all your primaries are included. By using ACES CC, we could do exposure and balance, and you could even switch, you could use printer lights or you could use the offset wheel. And you could add contrast and adjust saturation, all in the same node. And as I pointed out in another video, I believe it's best to have balance adjustments come before contrast because of how they interact with each other. And this still works in a single node doing it this way because if we look at the order of operations in the resolve manual, the lift gamma gain offset operations which we're using for this come before the contrast adjustment. So even in a single node, our order of operations is correct. So there is another benefit for using ACES CC for your primary adjustments. I will note that there is a, a caveat to this. Since you're using an offset tool, it is possible to get negative numbers making adjustments, pixels that go below zero here. And based on the tools you use, can cause issues later on in your node tree if they're not taken care of. This can happen with any working space and any tool that can allow that to happen. So if you want to prevent that, a good thing to do is to add a clamp after your ACES CC adjustments. There are some free clamps out there that you can download. If you want to try to keep things all within Resolve, just doing a pass-through CST can accomplish the same thing, as long as your tone mapping is enabled. Nothing else will change. And if you want to be on the safe side, you can always specify these so that you know for sure nothing is changing. And um, 
leave gamut mapping off. So those are my thoughts for today. Hopefully you'll give ACES CC a chance for one or all of those reasons. And let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you next time.